Garage. Welcome everyone to this very special episode of Automotive Aerodynamics with me, Gray. In this 10th episode, we're going to be looking at the aerodynamics of some of the sexiest fastback cars from the 80s and 90s. We have the Honda Integra, the Mazda RX-7, and the Porsche 911 Turbo. Now the analysis that was performed for this investigation is a little bit different than the hydrogen bubble which I usually perform. In this I did a quantitative analysis called PIV in which a laser is used to capture images which are processed and produce velocity fields around the vehicles. So I have an example here of an experiment that I've done where the laser is used to capture images which are then processed by a computer and you get an experimental velocity field which can then be stitched together and make uh, movies. So let's start with the Honda Integra and take a look at the aerodynamics. The particular model that I investigated is a Series 3 1993 to 2001 Acura Integra, if you want to get specific, and this model was sent to me by Mark from TB Motoring, so I have to say thank you for that. And what we're going to see is the aerodynamics of this particular car is very similar to the Mazda RX-7 FC. Both cars have a very gentle sloping rear windshield, very nice transition, and as you can see from the movie, the floor remains attached all along the back windshield and only separates at the back of the rear trunk. So we have a very clean airflow over the entire vehicle and we have a very clean separation at the back. Now this makes this car a very good candidate for rear spoilers and rear wings for generating extra downforce. This behavior can be emphasized by looking at the time average of the flow field. So what we do is we take the movie and we time average every single one of those instances to see the average flow field, the average flow patterns. And this is shown on the left here, and as you can see, just like before, the flow is very clean along the entire vehicle. There's a little bit of, of disturbance uh, due to some experimental errors with bubbles on the model upstream, uh, on the hood and the, and the roof, but if you ignore those, you can see that the flow remains attached all the way along the vehicle. It only separates at the rear trunk, and so this is a very clean airflow, very good for rear spoilers and rear wings if you want to generate that extra downforce. So if we now move on to the Mazda RX-7 FC, as I said before, the geometry of the vehicle is very similar to the uh, Honda Integra. And uh, because of this fastback, very nice sloping rear windshield, the flow remains attached fully along the vehicle all the way up to the rear of the trunk. Now, as you can see in the movie, this particular experiment had a little bit more bubbles than usual, so there is some error. Uh, on the hood and roof of the vehicle, but the key point here is that the flow remains fully attached all the way up to the back, which is exactly the same as the uh, Integra. So both these vehicles have very clean air flows, both are very good candidates for rear spoilers and rear wings. The main difference styling-wise is that the Integra is the cabin's shifted forward more, having a shorter nose, whereas the Mazda, the cabin's shifted backwards, and you have that nice long nose. But what happens if we look at something completely different, the Porsche 911? It's still a fastback, but it has a completely different shape. Well, let's take a look. So the Porsche is indeed very different. Most noticeably, it has a very uh, upright windshield, and this causes a very high acceleration at the windshield roof junction. Possible separation and reattachment, it's very hard to see on such a small scale model. But um, what we can notice here along the rear windshield is that the flow is not fully attached. We have some separation, some turbulence being generated. And this is showing up in the movie as the uh, blue low speed area along the back windshield. And this is most likely due to the rear windshield offset, which exists on these models. Now, I don't know why exactly the engineers decided to do that. Um, but it's a combination of that as well as the transition between that very upright windshield and the roof, which can cause separation and reattachment. So those two things together are causing um, some separation, some turbulence to be generated, and this is being convected downstream along the rear windshield. And for this particular model, the turbo, which has that sort of flat rear wing or rear spoiler, um, this turbulence is being convected onto that spoiler. 
Um, so this might help with cooling of the rear engine because you have the fins there open along the rear spoiler. I'm not exactly sure, but it is clear that the airflow is not as clean as with the Integra and the RX-7. Most noticeably as well, because of that rear spoiler, the flow is fully separated downstream of this. But um, again, this shows how keeping everything flush, everything nice and smooth in transition can keep the airflow attached and make your rear spoilers and rear wings more effective. So in celebration of sexy fastbacks, this was a quick look at the aerodynamics of three of my favorite, the Integra, the RX-7 FC, and the uh, 911 Turbo. I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to be transitioning a little bit more into CFD analysis now. And uh, as always, send me an email if you have any questions, make some recommendations, and uh, please subscribe.